It was Easter week a hundred years ago when there was quite the uprising in Ireland that had the revolution there that led to Ireland's independence. And Professor Bob Schmuel, not only an expert on politics, but has made himself into an expert on America and the Easter Rising, has done a ton of research about Ireland's exiled children. I was fascinated, Bob, to read that at the time of this uprising, there were more Irish in America than there were in Ireland, and, and really that's why the people in Ireland were looking to America for help at that time. Um, it's a interesting, I would argue it's a uh, defining moment, not only in Irish history, but also in Irish American history. And we tend to forget how many Irish uh, came over. <laughs> Uh, largely uh, in the middle of the 19th century because of the famine. Mm -hmm. And they were the poorest of the poor at that point. But by 1914, 15, 16, many of them had been quite successful in America. Um, economically, they were making it. Uh, politically, they were making it. and they kept looking back across the Atlantic to their previous homeland. In the case of some, they were first generation or second or third. Um, and what you see is that uh, so many of them contributed to the cause that ultimately led to the Easter Rising. Mm. Uh, and uh, Americans donated about $100,000 and compute that in today's currency, and it, it comes to about $2.5 million. Uh, Americans helped to buy the arms. Americans helped to uh, spread the word through publications about what was afoot in Ireland. Um, and then, interestingly enough, the proclamation, which sets forth the view that there should be an Irish republic, there's only one other country that's mentioned on it besides Ireland. And the phrase, supported by her exiled children in America. Mm -hmm. So even at that point, they are looking at America and saying, you have supported us. There were seven leaders who signed the proclamation. Five of them had spent time in the United States. One of them was a naturalized American citizen. You say that there are four key players in this mm -hmm. uh, in the Easter Rising. Can you kind of talk about them? Especially one of them was the President of the United States. By by key players, they would be, in my view, okay. uh, important. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, the Irish would have a different uh, okay. vantage point. Uh, but I was looking uh, exclusively at the American connections, the American angle. Uh, one of them, indeed, was uh, Woodrow Wilson, who in 1912 uh, ran for the presidency in a, in a weird sort of uh, election that had the incumbent president, William Howard Taft, running as well as a former president, Theodore Roosevelt. And Woodrow Wilson is the Democrat who emerges because of the divided vote on the, uh, the other side. Um, and the reason I mention that is that in 1912, he was very explicit in seeking the support of Irish America. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, Irish America, a strong constituency for the Democratic Party. Um, so he is embracing them. He is saying, my father had uh, parents who came from uh, Ireland, and I am Irish. Irish blood flows in my veins. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, fast forward to 1916 and the Easter Rising. And what happened was the Rising lasted about six days. But then there was a period of executions where they uh, literally shot firing squads, um, the leaders of the rebellion. But Woodrow Wilson didn't do anything. His secretary, what we would call chief of staff, sent out uh, messages saying that the president is concerned, the president <laughs> is involved, the president is this. But as I show in the book, and I went through the Wilson papers and the Library of Congress, um, 
some of the statements that are attributed to him were definitely ghosted. Mm. And I'm not sure that he even saw them. Uh, and uh, later on, it becomes even more important because there's the Paris Peace Conference and Irish America wants him to bring up the future of Ireland and he refuses. Now there's a documentary out with the book and mm -hmm. you, Liam Neeson participated in the documentary, in fact, even came to the Notre Dame campus as part of that. Talk about that documentary, where people might be able to see it, and I understand there's a local tie-in here in the South Bend area as well. The, um, the documentary uh, is produced by Notre Dame, the Keogh Naughton Institute for Irish Studies, and it's been a five or six year project, and uh, what they did is they decided to devote three hours, three separate hours, to the, the sort of beginning of the rising and the planning of it and then the rising itself and then the aftermath. And they went all over the world, quite frankly, in uh, interviewing uh, people. And it is going to be on PBS across mm -hmm. the United States um, beginning uh, later this month and then into uh, April. I think something like 200 stations have already wow. uh, picked it up. And um, it was a chance for Notre Dame to look at the Easter uh, Rising, the Irish Rebellion um, in a comprehensive way. And um, it's a analytical, historical, I think a very fair assessment of the meaning and impact that it well, had. You would expect nothing less out of the fighting Irish after all. <laughs> the book is entitled Ireland's Exiled Children, America and the Easter Rising. You can't get it right now, but you can pre-order it on Amazon and at your favorite bookstore as well. We certainly appreciate Bob Schmuel spending some time with us today to talk about a variety of things and Boy, you're going to be a world traveler here coming up. New York, Ireland, the whole bit. But we'll always think of the Harvest Show. As well, well you should. Thank you. <laughs> to connect with Professor Schmuel, go to www.nd.edu. If you can't remember that, you can find a link at our website at harvest-tv.com.